time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode four, The Digital Detox. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the digital revolution, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll discuss health issues resulting from too much digital devicing and provide a strategy to detox you from digital devices. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you on these great topics today, so let's get started. To detox, let's first define the word detox. Everyone uses the word, but really, what does detox mean? Detox means to let go, to create some space. We always say, give me some space. Well, that's what detox is all about, creating some space. It's not of any surprise to anyone that our technology habits are profoundly hijacking our brains. This leads to distraction, disturbance, and ultimately stupefaction. Yes, I said stupefaction, where you can't remember how to add one plus one. In the fall each year, we have the arrival of new smartphones. And now we have either chosen to hold on to last year's technology or we move on to faster, better, and more techno time. How many of us have to have the new cell phone? Or we wait and we get it later on. But still, it's always faster, better. Do you want to tap into that and get hooked in even more? What's happened is a serious problem started to arise, and it's not going away until we recognize the problem. doesn't mean not to have technology, but what we need to do is root up or remove the core of the problem and repair, rewire, and rejuvenate our life. The landscape is quite astonishing, and it's of no surprise that we're in an energy flow of mobile device attachment. Yes, I use the word attachment, but not only on the physical aspect of having a mobile device, but emotionally and mentally as well. There was a survey done by the, it was a Pew survey from 2015 that said participants, just guess how many couldn't live without their devices as many as 46% of the participants actually said that. And you also have other devices that hook into Snapchat, Instagram, and the biggest time of them all, Facebook. Facebook now occupies more than five hours on average of U.S. consumer days. And, you know, I've asked uh, students before, you know, they've said that they didn't have time to do certain things. And I always ask them, how much time do you spend on Facebook? And they don't admit it, but you just have to go to someone's account and you can see how much time they spend. So that's pretty incredible uh, that, you know, all of these social media, uh, techno uh, software programs, gadgets are taking up so much of our time. And, you know, once I remember there was a great master that said, there's one thing that you can't get more of, and that's time. So it's something for us to consider. Some of the issues that I have with uh, looking at this because I'm working with clients continually where, you know, you know, they say that they don't have time to do things, but people are even celebrating their birthdays with a virtual birthday cake. Come on now. Being a human being is about being with a human being. And I don't think anybody's paying attention to what this movement is doing to the very molecular and cellular aspects of our human organism. organism. Do we even know uh, what's going on or do we just choose to ignore, not really understanding that our brains are de-evolving perhaps to a reptile? You know, reptiles don't show emotions. Uh, I had a student once that told me she had a reptile as a pet, wonderful pet, knew knew that this uh, when she came home, but didn't show the same emotions as say her dogs did. And that's because of the brain. You know, we talk about I've talked about in other podcasts and in other um, blogs about the reptilian brain. And so what's happening to us when we don't celebrate a birthday with another human being and we're doing a virtual birthday cake? 
Well, as the smartphone uh, movement swells, it's going to bring with it the inevitable side effects that we're going to see. And they're health side effects that I'd like to talk about today. And we need to pay attention. And I don't think we're aware of it because we wouldn't do it if we really knew how much we're hurting ourselves. So let's look at some of the side effects. We have sleep disturbance. According to the National Sleep Foundation, 71% of people sleep withholding their cell phone or having them in bed with them at the nightstand. So there was a study done in Science of Translational Medicine, and from September, it was, it was a study done in September 2015, that the amount of caffeine in a double espresso has less of an effect on our sleep than staring at a mobile device before bed. And I'm talking about compu computers also. I know when I teach at night, I have difficulty falling asleep. I never put two and two together, that meaning that I didn't know uh, that there was a study done with the caffeine as well as the computers and any of that screen staring had in mind. And so I started working with some clients and interviewing. Uh, I've always said, you know, turn off your device. However, what if you get a phone call at nine o'clock at night? One of my clients lives a very, very healthy lifestyle, but speaks to family members late at night and wonders why there's such difficulty in going to bed or staying asleep because it actually does jar the nervous system. Another side effect and this is of no surprise to anyone, is attention span. If you read my blog where I spoke about a goldfish could possibly have more of an attention span than a human, because according to research, goldfish uh, is given a reputation of having the shortest attention span and maybe even a fruit fly. Uh, but I'm saying maybe it's a human being at this point. Did you ever try speaking to someone and they can't even look at you in the eye? Their mind uh, goes from you can see the thoughts that are coming in and the eyes just shift, 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 shift. So according to a new study, Microsoft uh, did a study where people now generally lose concentration after eight seconds, highlighting the effects of an increasingly digitalized lifestyle on the brain. So I'm starting to consider how are we evolving? Are we evolving? Is our brain evolving or is it devolving? I'm not sure if this kind of usage is adding to the benefit of our growth and development. So test how strong your memory is. And I'll get to the end of Digital Detox uh, with giving you a practice, and you can see, and then you can write in and let me know how you feel. Another side effect of the digital revolution is people isolation. We're isolating ourselves more and more almost like the cancer cell, by the way. The cancer cell is an isolated cell. And that's why it strives and it works so hard and it proliferates because it wants to live. Because we live in communication. In isolation, we reach and we grasp and we become desperately involved in trying to survive. Well, people isolation is a real problem. So when we look at smartphones or any social media used out of context, we're finding that it's causing a breakdown in the human communication system. Keep in mind, for cellular structure, for human structure, for anything, foundation principles are communication systems are what keep cells alive. Again, I say communication systems, the networking, neurological programming, all of that communication keeps us alive and healthy. When that communication breaks down, that's when we have an infiltration of disease. I'd ask you, have you ever seen happy people eating at a restaurant who are talking while waiting for their food? Or they don't engage with each other? They're engaging with their mobile device? Check it out. Are they happy when they're engaging? Or are they happy when they're texting and waiting for their food? One third of smartphone users, or even more, use their smartphones during dinner without having face-to-face -face exchanges. And what that does is it undermines the deep connection of humanness, being a human being. Take a poll, and I always do something when I go out. Next time you go to a restaurant, assess how many people have their phones on the table, and then how many are using them. And it would be quite extraordinary to see. 
Another side of uh, using the uh, digital uh, technology that we have is anxiety and depression. There have been multiple studies that have that have come to the conclusion that our always connected world is leading to an epidemic of anxiety and depression diagnoses. On average, according to a study, it was in the May issue of Computers and Human Behavior, they found that the daily use of mobile device for a depressed person was 68 minutes, while a healthy subject used the devices on average for just 17 minutes. So although some people speculate that the use of a smartphone works on the dopaminergic receptors in the brain, I'm not quite sure that this is so true. The answer lies deeper than a simple transmitter response. So keep that in mind. Another side effect of digital overuse is stress. Research from the American Psychological Association began to detail the increasing amount of stress caused by time spent spent on smartphones. So being connected in the same regards means you're always available and able to answer emails, texts, social media messages. You have no time for yourself. Some people actually experience phantom vibrations, a sensation that left them to believe the phone was vibrating when it actually wasn't. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Smartphones and these digital devices have also been linked to weight management issues, decreasing our overall fitness, back pain, nerve pain. I even saw somewhere that they said text claw. That's pretty amazing. So, and we also know, unfortunately, and it's sad to even report this, the increase in smartphone related accidents, both on the road and while walking. People walk into things. What's the obvious answer? Well, it might not be that obvious, but It is to probably many of the listeners out there today. It's a digital detox because we may have reached the point where even that isn't feasible. There are other studies that detail significant mental and physical distress like panic, confusion, feelings of extreme isolation when smartphone addicts attempt to unplug. So it's not quite easy once the mind develops habits. So what... What have I used or suggested to clients and people in the community? First, a systematic meditation training might be the answer, or at least a clue to get us starting in the right direction to find out and move beyond our addiction to take back your life. And I'm talking, I'm using the word meditation very loosely here, but spending five to 10 minutes with yourself in the morning. The thing I love and what's so amazing about meditation isn't immediately apparent since it does require you to do the work and not some techno gadget to do it for you. I mean, there's even programs that I've actually tried because people have called in and said, what do you think of this program? I can just put it on my ears and get the same effect of meditation that someone's been doing for 20 years. I could have it instantly within 10 minutes. Now, If anybody could actually be fooled by such nonsense, I would say try it, but there's no way that instant gratification will ever have the same effect on the neurological networking of the brain and the whole nervous system for that matter by just a 10 minute practice hooked into something versus 10 years of really working with discipline of mind and body. That's the false prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, that I continually speak about. Anybody that claims in 10 minutes you can meditate has never meditated in their life. It just doesn't exist, especially if you're not born into a meditative environment. And that software program will also create yet another dependency for you. The most fulfilling part of life is having the ability to learn and do something for your personal development, to have the clarity and confidence to make those choices. When our brains are hijacked, we lose that freedom and suffer extreme loss without even knowing it. It's worth pointing out that as human beings, we have an expansive capacity given the anatomy of our brain. When we choose distraction over focus, we lose our ability to find freedom and fulfillment in life. 
Remember from a a previous blog post that our brain has the ability to change neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity means our brain is continually changing. And that change can be for the better or for the worse, depending on what you feed your mind. If you feed your mind uh, calmness, uh, music that's not uh, disruptive to the nervous system, good literature, good books, things that will actually nourish and feed the mind field, then it's going to change in a positive direction. If you're feeding it sound bites or uh, music or videos that are very harmful to the inner state of being, then it's going to change in a different way. So take notice when you lift your phone to check email or see who beeped in the chat box, chances are your browsing won't stop there. You might find yourself on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, or even Instagram. Remember, you may be heading north, but something detours you and takes you south. And if you're anything like most people, we do. We start doing one thing on our technical device, and then an hour later, we find that we're doing something else entirely, all under the guise of checking email real quick. This is called distraction, and you're leaking your vital energy and hurting your brain. It's very, very true. I know just the other day, I was in the middle of doing something, and I didn't turn off my messenger, and someone sent me a fantastic video. It was a neuroscience video, and I couldn't help myself, and I just got totally sidetracked. So I was going north, and I ended up going south two hours later. I finished it. I learned a lot, but I had work to do. So keep it in mind, it happens to everyone on some day or occasion that we're not prepared. And there are reasons for this to happen. And these are the reasons that I've come up with. You may have a disease called FOMO. If you haven't heard of FOMO, it's brand new. It's probably not brand new, but it's identified. And FOMO is the fear of missing out and the anxiety and dejected uh, dejected feelings that come with that. How many of us have felt FOMO? Oh my gosh, I can't miss out. I better stay connected. Just wait for that text. Just wait for that call. So FOMO, be aware of FOMO, fear of missing out. You may not just have a focused intention to start with. So this is the second reason. You may be going north, but you get headed south. So FOMO was the first. The second is you may not have the focused intention to start with, or you don't really enjoy what you're doing. So your mind takes you somewhere else. You say, oh, well, this might be more interesting than what I have to do. Maybe we're a procrastinator. We know we have something to do, but we just don't feel like doing it. So we get sidetracked. And the third I came up with was you may want to connect to the social media world because you're feeling isolated and lonely to begin with and think that that will help you feel better. So we reach out and we stay connected in the digital world. Understandably so. These are just only a few reasons and I'm sure there's more. The point is here just to become aware of your habit pattern so you can collect your energy and contain it and focus your mind to use your mind in the way that's benefiting you. Is there a solution? Of course. You can learn to enjoy and utilize the technology available. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, invention. But don't let yourself get run by it or have it run your life. Here are some solutions for the community of listeners that I have used for clients over the past several, several years. Schedule specific times to check email. You've heard of this before, but really set a timer because it's easy, easy to be lured out of it. Set a specific time in the morning that you will turn on devices In our household, we turn everything off at a certain time and we turn things on at a certain time. I suggest only after meditation practice, do not turn it on before. You need time in the morning to tune up your mind before you bombard it with external stimuli. Another another suggestion is leave your phone at home when you're going to lunch, dinner, or walk or bike in the park. You don't need your phone with you all the time. One of the saddest sights is when people are walking in the park or having lunch and their face is glued to their smartphone, or they're not listening to the sounds of nature, they're plugged into their phone. 
just say no. Let yourself have an opportunity to take in the sounds of nature. Learn to meditate. When I say meditate, I don't mean just sitting down and being mindful of what you're doing or not doing. That's a great start. I mean, get a systematic training going so that when you sit down, you learn to breathe, relax, and learn to collect and contain your energy. Meditation needs to be systematic if you want results. It's not enough to just sit down and allow yourself to be. That's great, but most people can't do that. We need to retrain our mind. We need to seal off the senses to focus our mind. And that has to be done systematically, one step at a time. That's why most people say they can't meditate because they're not getting a systematic process and a way to do this systematically. And then the last suggestion that I may offer is to take one day per week or a time segment within a day each week and perform the digital detox. And the way you do this is to remove yourself from anything that is digital in sight. Breathe and take a moment and connect to that which makes you human and connects you to all other life on the planet. That's where, when I say remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment. In order to live consciously aware in the moment, you need to pay attention to your breath because breath is the link between the mind and body and the mind and body are one. So breathe and take that moment and reconnect to what makes you human and connects you to other life on the planet. Follow any, if not all of these steps, and you could stay connected to the point you don't experience FOMO, fear of missing out. You'll still get your text, your messages, your emails, your phone calls. Only now you'll have less incentive to respond right away and more incentive to be with yourself. Because as these mobile devices and technology continues getting bigger, you're gonna have to be skillful in what you are going to do to maintain the intelligence and mental freedom so that your brain doesn't get hijacked. My advice is to pay attention to what you're doing and do not take your human brain for granted. Be aware and train your mind to stay focused. Why? Because the energy of the mind is the essence of life. Train your mind. It sounds like a big, steep, practice, but it really isn't. Start one step at a time. Start with breath or get yourself, if you want to go one step further, then after breath, get yourself a training in systematic meditation so that you could learn very, very simple steps to align your mind and body. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. If you'd like to get the podcast automatically, it's available on your favorite podcast app like iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and others. You can also visit SusanTaylor.org and click on the subscribe button. Contact us at SusanTaylor.org if you have any questions, comments, or feedback. And I'd like to say thank you for listening. The Susan Taylor Podcast comes out every week. Again, if you have questions, comments, something you might want to hear, contact us at susantaylor.org. Until next time, remain calm.